Hi there! For today's show, please welcome our guest, this fly. Unfortunately, it's not so full of life, but I can assure you it died a natural death. Never kill animals for experimenting. With my little friend here, I'm going to show you an example of how mathematics and mathematical patterns can be found in nature. For that, we'll have to take a closer look at it. I'm going to use lab camera's microscope function and this camera, which has manual focus. Here we go. What you see now is just this piece of paper on the table. But if I put this fly a little closer, then you see this big stain, which means I have to set the focus and try again. Of course, I have to play a little bit with it to get a better view. Okay, now it's good. Quickly take a photo. Good. Okay, this one is good enough to see what I wanted. So this is the eye of the fly and we can start making observations. First of all, the shapes. How is this even possible that it looks so regular and ordered? It's like pure mats on the eye of a fly. And how comes it so different from our eyes? The explanation is pretty simple. Flies have so-called compound eyes, meaning there are several tiny individual eye units, and by several I mean thousands. More professionally, these eye units are called omatidia. They are located on a convex surface, thus pointing in slightly different directions. Therefore, compound eyes possess a very large view angle and can detect fast movement. The big question is, what does the fly see then? It's a combination of the inputs from the numerous eye units, each forming a separate image, resulting in a mosaic-like picture. Extra info, a study reveals that a certain region of the male fly's eye helps them keep track of fast-moving objects, a mechanism which they use to track female flies, unlike the female ones who generally just glide along minding their own business, while poor male ones are constantly on the look for a partner. Scientists call this part of the eye the last spot. Going back to the fly we have here, it would be interesting to see how regular these eye units actually are, so let's make some measurements on this one. To reveal some regularity in the shapes, I try to find some pattern in the angles, although it seems impossible to measure the eye units one by one, but if I measure the angles of these eye rows, it can be considered as an estimation. Okay, watching these results, now I can tell you that these eye units form regular hexagons, which have angles with 120 degrees. Of course, it's not just flies having mathematical patterns on them. I brought another example, this here. And the good news is that for this sample, no animal had to die, as this is the shed skin of a snake. To be precise, it belonged to a king cobra. It's crazy that I know someone who knows someone who has a king cobra as a pet. But anyway, very quickly, let's have a look at it with lab camera. I've already prepared a sample. Basically, I put a smaller part on a piece of gray paper. I changed the camera to this one and here is the sample. Now I quickly grab this webcam and take a photo from above. Like that, perfect. As you can see, these shapes are also hexagons, just like in case of the fly, but I have to admit they don't seem to be too regular. So I will zoom in a little bit and let's check these smaller scales as they look more ordered. Like previously, I tried to measure the angles drawn by these bigger lines, hoping to get values around 120 degrees. Okay, they don't perfectly fit, but in average they do show the regular hexagon pattern. The third, as well as the final example I'd like to show you, is the honeycomb. Unfortunately, I don't have it here right now, but an image will just do good. Well, I loaded an image, and for the first sight you can see the strictly mathematical pattern, so let's check the angles. As you can see, all of them are around 120 degrees, indicating the regular hexagon shape. Obviously, it's also a valid question why and how they form it, but let's just save this for another video. Alright, I believe it's really amazing how much mathematics and nature is in connection. 
Of course, these few examples were just the very beginning of a long, long list of cases where you can find some interesting mathematical patterns in nature. I hope you liked my video. Go on and try to find even more exciting occurrences of maths. Thanks for watching today and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and my blog to get a weekly update on our science videos and see you next time with a new experiment.